Welcome to Just Relationships, the show that offers you concrete ways to make your relationships better. Whether it's your boss, your spouse, your children, or your friends, the quality of your relationships in life directly affects how you feel about yourself and the success you achieve. Your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer, a psychotherapist, telecoach, author, and seminar leader, will interview top experts to help you learn to manage this essential part of your life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer. Greetings to you. Are you interested in relationships? Well, that's probably a very funny question asking you because you are listening to Just Relationships. And it's rare that I have such an incredibly perfect match for my show, Just Relationships. I am happy to introduce to you Deborah Roberts, who is the author of the book, Listen, Listen, The Relationship Protocol, How to Talk, Diffuse, and Build Healthier Relationships. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you, Dr. Duffy. So happy to be here. Oh, wonderful. And Deborah Roberts, you are also a licensed social worker. Yes. And we met years ago when you were doing a program for single parents, mm-hmm. Single Parents Network. Right. And it's wonderful to make contact with you again. Yes, pleasure to reconnect with oh, you as well. Thank you. So I have to say, Deborah, that I I have an incredible pet peeve about living in an age of such incivility. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was lecturing on incivility already 10 years ago. And and who could have ever imagined mm-hmm. that it would be this bad, this crass, this crude, that, that people, um, unfortunately, what's happening is that the little people are beating up on each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, out of frustration. So... The whole idea of I want to get along with you and I am going to be kind. Right. We're looking at the steps That's right. to um, good relationships. Right. And to the uh, third step, I will never do anything to intentionally hurt you. Right. The fourth step, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. This reminds me, Deborah, of the four agreements, mm. you know, the pr- pr- profundity of, of those. Mm-hmm. And here, I'm going to repeat them. To have a, a high-quality relationship, just four steps. I want to get along with you. I am going to be kind. These are all intentions. I will never do anything to intentionally hurt you. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Right. So it must have taken a lot for you to write this book. Well, it it did take a lot. I, I don't really consider myself an author as well. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm a mental health practitioner first, and mm-hmm. this came about from the work that I do. And, um, you know, when I sat down to finally put it on paper, it was amazing. It just came out of my cellular structure. <laughs> I mean, right. it was just... Um, and what you just spoke about are what I do call the four steps, and those are the how-tos, how to have a conversation, how to bring up a topic, how to diffuse a conflict, how to um, even bring up a controversial subject to someone, and how to rebuild trust. Those four steps can make a world of difference if individuals just bring a little bit of thoughtfulness to the conversation. Um, yes. It, it's, you know, it, it's the only way to have positive communication, reduce emotional escalations, uh, build trust, rebuild trust, and have a relationship focus. That, that's the other thing. There are two key elements with this model as well. Tell. Do tell. Yeah, and they are mandatory ingredients. Um, first key element is commitment. And that asks you to behave and function in a committed way to the other person and or to commit to improving the relationship, to focus on committing to the relationship, Mm. even even during challenging times. And it's such a critical part. You can't have one foot out the door because that just creates an insecurity for the other person. You can't yes. have an argument and fall apart and say, well, I want a divorce or mm-hmm. just keep hanging up the phone or 
even on a smaller scale, say, on a continuous basis, no, you know, I'll, I'll be home at 5 o'clock, and you walk in the door at 10 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. without any phone call or any consideration, and the, uh, the other person starts to feel uncared for, they don't feel your commitment. Even if it's an innocent gesture on that person's part, the behavior itself indicates, you know, I'm not being considerate of you. So, therefore, yes. the other person starts to feel they don't matter. So, commitment is huge. And then... The other key element I call shift your thinking because you have to let the other person know that you value them. Mm -hmm. They have to feel valued. They have to matter. And the commitment comes into play because you're committed to this relationship. I, I ask people to picture an umbrella over the two of you. Right, it's a hmm. picture, and the umbrella is the relationship, hmm. and you're both under that umbrella together. And hmm. the external forces may, you know, like the rain or whatever it is, you know, external forces, stressors, job, whatever else is going on, children, um, they are going to try to, they will impact the relationship. And it's really up to you to keep that relationship focus, not just an I or a me focus, but an us and a we focus. Mm -hmm. And I call it shifting your thinking so that you're turning toward the other person and they know that they're important to you. They they must know that they matter. And those two ingredients um, are so interesting because in a healthy relationship, they naturally exist. Yes, yes. And I like, uh, first of all, I love your metaphor. <laughs> and um, I, I, I often use the one of the rowboat boat, you know, rowing in the same direction instead right. of different directions. Right. And, and this umbrella is very powerful. I'm thinking of actually putting an umbrella in my treatment room mm. and uh, <laughs> really just making reference to it. Um, I love and, that. Yeah. Yeah, so the power of metaphor, mm-hmm. sim- symbolism, what it all means. Yes. Excellent. Oh, thank you. It's, it's powerful. And the way that I look at the key elements is when I'm working with a couple or, or any relationship, for that matter, when they are not getting along, I'm teaching them these two key elements. I'm teaching them how to behave in a committed way and to let each other know that they're committed to each other. And I'm teaching them how to shift their thinking to to have a more relationship-oriented focus. But, I mean, people can read my book. People can listen to even just our conversation and, you know, get it. It's not complicated. It's, it's, It's basic stuff. It's basic stuff. We are, by nature, social animals, social mm-hmm. beings. We need to belong. We need a tribe. And yet we also are living in a culture of excessive individualism. Mm-hmm. And I myself am an individualist. I believe that I have the right to follow my own path, design my own life, look for my, my heart's desire. Yet excessive individualism is every quote unquote man for himself. Right. And if I need anything, I am needy, which is bad. Right. And I'm not supposed to ask for help. I'm supposed to be that island. Mm-hmm. So it, it's true that that we it, we have the excessive individualism and we have competitiveness. Mm-hmm. I love that you're saying that because one of my pet peeves and what I try to teach people that I work with as well is when you're in a relationship, it's never about winning. Mm-hmm. It's just not. It's not about being right. It's not about making your point. It's really about the relationship. And a lot of what I ask people to do, I think it, it, it's almost counterintuitive, is how do you want the other person to feel in this relationship? Right. And that's where I'd rather have their energy go. Rather than focus on me and I and my needs and what you're not doing for me, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, much more of an orientation of if you come to me and you say, you know, I feel unappreciated or I feel like, you, you know, I'm invisible in this relationship or whatever it is, most of the time the person is received with a, come on, you're being crazy or that's right, ridiculous. Exactly. But if you have an orientation of how do I want the other person to feel, then it's a much more natural response to say, Jim, really sorry that you're feeling that way. What, what can we do to change that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, uh, very true. And 
I'm thinking when I lecture, when I use the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Mm -hmm. Steve Covey's book, to to lecture on this stuff. And number one, of course, be proactive, which is a a, a wonderful thing as opposed to reactive. He also talks about going for the double win, the win-win. And he also quotes St. Francis of Assisi, Assisi, uh, seek, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Seek first to understand and then to be understood. And it is literally Deborah Saintly. And it is counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. I want you to understand me. That's, that's my energy. That's my goal. Mm-hmm. And for me to understand you. Wow. Right. Counterintuitive, unnatural, it seems, uh uh-oh, I'm not going to get what I want and need because I'm not advocating for myself. Yet, how do we turn people away by only thinking of ourselves? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. That's right. Yes. And, And when people are in conflict, you know, we all turn away to a greater or lesser extent. But it's recognizing, you know, that... This person still matters to me even when I'm not happy with them or even when we're disagreeing. And when you have that commitment to the relationship, that will guide how you will speak to them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So yes. that, that is your, <clears throat> you know, that's your compass and that is your moral compass really and helps right. you to speak kindly and, and uh, respect them and speak more thoughtfully and give them the benefit of the doubt. But if I'm just focused on me and winning and I don't really give a hoot about you, we're, we're having a very different conversation. Mm-hmm. Very, very different. Yeah. But the perspective is such a critical factor. Yes. And Deborah Roberts, what about dinosaur brains? Mm-hmm. You know, what about our primitive brain, the threat, the fight, flight and, right. or freeze? Right. And when that primitive brain gets in, engaged, which is our permanent alarm system, right. and all we know when the blood leaves our brain and rushes into our outer limbs, all we know how to do is to fight or flee. Mm-hmm. What do we do then? You know, what's so interesting is I always say as soon as you get defensive, as soon as you react, as soon as you attack, you know, the hope is that the other person that you're both not in that state. Right. Because th- that's truthfully what, how I would respond to what you just said. Mm-hmm. Because it takes two people to continue an argument, and it really takes two to have this engaged, you know, one-upmanship. Right. So if you're about to fight or flight, and I recognize that because hopefully I, in that moment, you know, am I'm feeling more grounded, I can say to you, wait, wait a minute, you know, hold on. I don't want you to do that, we're okay, or let's revisit this, or let's just take a break. But I think when you are the person in that mode, there's an irrational moment for sure. Um, And the hope is that it doesn't last for a long time and that they can take a deep breath and, you know, and try to recognize that this is a trigger. This is a, you know, perhaps an old trigger or something that's happening in that moment that is not helpful and it's not going to be helpful to the relationship for sure. Yes. Um, and the, the, I agree completely in the ideal and that is the goal. And yet we know that there's such a thing as emotional contagion, mm-hmm. that emotions are contagious right. and we have mirror neurons. Right, we do. So when the other person attacks us, even though they're, they think they're defending themselves, they're really being offensive. Mm-hmm. In their desire to defend, they become offensive. Right. And then the other person gets threatened. They go into fight flight. Right. And then all hell breaks loose. That's right. So, That's right. And then they come in my office. <laughs> right. And then they come in your office. Absolutely. And you know what? Honestly, what I end up doing is really keeping them in the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, just I, I think the most important thing about the relationship protocol model is it's a very present moment. Mm-hmm. It's what's going on right now. I don't really care about your history as much. I don't really care about your, you know, list of complaints about each other. What just happened? Why mm-hmm. did you just go, you know, 
crazy on him, mm-hmm. or why are you mm-hmm. speaking to her that way, or 